So in the previous video, we determined that our first case, our first, the first type of amplitude modulation we learned about DSBSC, we learned that this was going to be a little expensive, a little difficult, a little hard to do because our real channels are going to add a bunch of distortion. It's going to uh, mess up this cosine wave. It's going to make it hard to apply this cosine wave to demodulate. And so you're going to get a bunch of errors. And so in cases where you have many transmitters, or sorry, one transmitter, but many receivers, right, you would be allowed to have some complexity at the transmit side. So you could add some expense to your one transmitter, but you should not add any more expense at the receiver. So let's think about an idea that we can apply that would allow us to do this, a way that would make our uh, transmitter transmitting process a little more expensive, but would make the reception uh, quite simple and easy. So the idea is to transmit two different signals. What are those two signals? Well, the first one would be our modulated message. So we'll transmit our modulated message, and then we'll transmit another signal, which is this, uh, the cosine wave with that carrier frequency, just at some higher amplitude, okay? Some higher constant amplitude. So we'll transmit two messages. Our modulated message, just like in DSBSC, plus we'll add a second message, a second signal that we uh, transmit, and it's going to be the carrier cosine wave at a constant higher amplitude. When we do this, right, we're going to get this um, modulated message which has two parts, right? This is the, the new part that we're adding, and this is the old part that we were discussing in the DSB SC. So this is what we just add, and then the old part is over here. Now, what is the trade-off here? Why would we do this? So it requires more power to transmit the two signals, but what we're going to find is that by transmitting these two signals, and especially adding in this extra, uh, carrier frequency wave with a higher amplitude, we're going to make it so that our receiver does not need to generate some unknown and complex cosine wave that's undergone some frequency shift and some phase shift. So in the case where you have one transmitter but many receivers, adding a little bit of expense here at the transmit side, so adding this little bit more wave at the transmit side, is going to make things less expensive for every single receiver in your system. And what will this do uh, in the time frequency trade-off? Well, uh, not a lot, right? So this term is simply going to add two different pulses here uh, at your plus and minus carrier frequency, and they're going to have an amplitude of a half. So whatever you select for this extra carrier frequency cosine wave, Right, that's going to show up here in the second term in the frequency domain. So these two parts in green are going to be identical between DSB, SC, and AM. And then in AM, you're going to have this one more added term in both the time domain on the left and the frequency domain on the right. And this amplitude modulation that we see, right, we can rewrite it, right, we can combine these terms together. And then the A and the MT are going to combine, go out front to get this uh, time domain amplitude modulated signal. And then in the frequency domain, you'll still have it looking like this. And in this case, right, we can, by simplifying like this, we can see that our DSBSC signal modulates directly with the message, whereas our AM system modulates with both the message and uh, some extra constant in addition to the message.